Kochaka from Intel. Uh, he will talk about his New Rips 2019 paper, Modeling Uncertainty by Learning a Hierarchy of Deep Neural Connections. Please go ahead, Ranan. Hi. So let me first say that this, this work will be presented in two weeks at New Rips, but it also depends on results we got in, from our two uh, papers from last year, from last year's New Rips. One of them is from the causal discovery domain and the other one from the deep learning domain. So uncertainty, when we discuss uncertainty, we consider two types of uncertainty. One is epistemic, which is due to lack of information in the training set about a new test sample. And the other type of uncertainty is aleatoric, which is due to inherent noise in our system. Now, in, aleatoric uncertainty is like when you are trying to classify uh, between dogs and cats, and we have one type of dogs that look like a, a cat. So no matter how much training data we have, we will not be able to reduce that uncertainty. Common deep networks are not designed to model uncertainty and they are not able to distinguish between those two types of uncertainty using the common tools, of course. So let me first show you at a glance uh, how our solution works. It is a network that we learn, a neural connectivity pattern, such that allows us to sample subnetworks from it during inference. So we sample multiple times this network and aggregate the results. And then we have uncertainty. This way we are able to calculate uncertainty. Often in deep, network, in deep learning, uh, a dense connectivity is considered, either between neurons or between filters in uh, convolutional neural nets. And one may ask, is there a sparse neural structure that is good as much without sacrificing accuracy or calibration or other properties? And if such structure does exist, can we learn it from, uh, from the data, from the training data? Or more interestingly, can we learn it from unlabeled data? And, we are, and if we are able to learn it from data, can we also encode the uncertainty into the structure, into the connectivity between neurons. So let me show you a common tool for uh, modeling uncertainty in common neural nets. These are Bayesian neural nets where we want to integrate out the weights, but we have to know the posterior distribution of the weights given the training data. Here, X and Y are the training data. This is intractable, usually, so we, we use the base rule and set some prior, or assume some kind of a prior. Usually, and this is a, an important point here, usually this prior is selected to be agnostic to the input X even though we can condition it on X. And then this, uh, some uh, variation lower bound is maximized. You can see that in this variation lower bound, the prior can be viewed as a regularizer. So why aren't we conditioning uh, the, 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 the weights on the input data? You can see this is a, um, causal diagram describing the assumptions, the common assumption. And our assumption is that there is a confounding arc between X, the unlabeled input data, and our weights. But what is the meaning of this confounding arc? What, what, it's not very intuitive. How can we condition the discriminative function on unlabeled data? It's, it's not very trivial. So first, we assume that there is some kind of a generative process for the data, and there is some kind of a structure. For that, we use 
a causal discovery algorithm where we discover or identify the causal relations among X, the input data, and then we showed in our last year's NeurIPS paper that we can construct, according to these causal relations, a deep neural structure. We also showed that this neural structure can be used as a discriminative structure. It means that this G, the graph, the connectivity, can both serve as a generative process and also as the structure of a discriminative structure. So this is how the structure look like, looks like for the MNIST data. And uh, you can see here that information from one neural root here can be split, and actually this is copied, and multiple neural roots are processed together. Another interesting point here is that you can see that the, in the layers that are closer to the input, the, the connectivity is very sparse. And as we go deeper, the connectivity is dense. This is automatically determined by the algorithm. We do not uh, interfere in this process. But this is a single estimate of that confounder there. We want to treat it as a random variable. For that, we developed a, a new causal discovery algorithm under causal sufficiency as assumptions. Uh, again, this is another paper from last year's NeurIPS. This way we are able to obtain the probability of causal relations. And from these causal relations, we were, we were able to learn a hierarchy of neural connections. A hi this hierarchy actually couples together a lot of neural, um, neural nets jointly and efficiently. But uh, let me show you again how it looks like. It's too difficult to show it in 2D. So this is a visualization of that. Uh, the leaves here actually look only at a subset of the input. It means that we process each subset of the input independently and differently. And the, de the deepest layer there is the, actually here it's the softmax, so it's actually it can be viewed as a two layer. During inference, as I discussed earlier, we can sample subsets of this network. And each sampled network actually corresponds to a, a causal diagram over the input X. And these are sampled uh, proportionally to the uh, conditional, uh, proportionally to their uh, posterior given the data, the input. Now this hierarchy, you can ask how many uniqueness, unique structures are there? Maybe all those structures are the same. They have the same connectivity. So we check that. And you can see this is for MNIST. And we saw that for small data sets, we have a larger number of unique structures. And this is the point over there. And it means that we have a broader prior over the network parameters, the discriminative network param parameters for small data sets. And, and this is automatically determined. And for large data sets, it converges to some uh, number. It can be viewed as an aleatoric uncertainty. It means that there is some fixed number of networks that needs to be in the ensemble, cannot be decreased. Okay, this is another experiment where we show we can identify the or calculate efficiently the epistemic uncertainty. The bottom row are images generated by VAE, which have low epistemic uncertainty in contrast to the upper row, which don't look like uh, digits, MNIST digits. We compared ourselves to multiple benchmarks here, uh, MC Dropout and others. And we show that uh, an important one important thing, uh, from that hierarchy, only 10% of the network is sampled each inference in uh, contrast to MC Dropout where usually 50% or more is sampled. And we found that it's very well calibrated compared to other methods. And you can find out more in our blog post or in our paper. Thank you. Well done.
thank you, Vanana. Any quick question? So let's thank the speaker again. Thank you.